What do we do with the COVID winners that sold off hard earlier this year before rebounding like crazy in the last couple of months? Take the Trade Desk. That's a Kramer Fave technology company that helps businesses manage data-driven digital advertising campaigns. And they are really good at streaming video. The stock's been a gigantic long-term winner as advertising dollars continue to migrate from traditional channels to the Internet. And that's their strength. But in the first few months of 2021, the stock got cut in half as the world went back to normal. Investors decided to sell the trade desk. Uh, they, they didn't even ask questions. Now, it doesn't help that big tech giants like Apple and Google keep announcing new privacy features that will make it harder for advertisers to track your activity on the Internet. However, thanks to the rotation back into fast-growing tech stocks, the trade desk has come roaring back since its lows in mid-May, like many other stocks. That includes, by the way, the 1.4% gain today after the company announced a new digital media trading platform, Solomar, which I think could be a huge deal. Earlier today, we got a chance to speak with Jeff Greenies, the founder, chairman, and CEO of the trade desk. Take a look. Jeff, this is a huge day for the trade desk. Solomar, why is it important? Solomar is really important because there's this really important moment that is happening right now for marketers around the world, which is they're expected to do more with less. And because of the global pandemic, connected TV has just been on the rise. And so they need a new product to meet all of these new and changing uh, issues that are facing them, and that's what this product is. All right. Well, look, I think that we all know that Google is the king of advertising, both getting ads but also rating ads. How can you, a little company, Jeff, take Google on? Because that's what you're really doing. Yeah, so we are taking on Google. I wouldn't call them the king. I think that's still, I, I think the throne is still up for grabs. Okay. But the reason why they've done so well is because they've monetized Google.com and YouTube.com really well. We think that advertising is less about navigation like Google.com and more about winning hearts and minds across a very competitive media landscape, which has hundreds, thousands of different properties, websites, apps in it. And so we just want to make certain that we're objectively deciding uh, which ads an advertiser should use. And our objectivity is something that Google doesn't have because they're trying to monetize their sites. Okay, before I get to the advertisers, tell me as a consumer why I want Solomar. And what does it do for me that's better than before? So uh, right now, especially in connected TV, but also in journalism, also in music, there's a tremendous amount of pressure on the Internet for it to perform. And so perform what, means uh, so perform, meaning that you generate enough revenue to pay for the content that okay. you're creating. And so as you have perhaps seen on connected TV, you used to only see somewhere between zero and two ads right. per break. And now you're seeing that start to go up. Yeah. And so the vision that we have for the Internet is to preserve the quid pro quo of the Internet, where you see relevant ads in exchange for free content. And if you can make those relevant and, and leveraging data that is extremely sensitive to the consumer, then you can make it so that you are only showing two ads, three ads. They're highly relevant, highly effective. And most importantly, that generates the revenue so that the consumer can keep getting the very best of TV and journalism and music. And then also those companies can stay in business. Without that happening, something falls apart. But a bell went off in my head when you said sensitive data. We are seeing hacks everywhere. Do I want my data uh, exposed? Uh, you definitely don't want your data exposed as it relates to anything that's personally identifiable or anything that's sensitive to you. Most people that are trying to sell you soda or chicken or whatever are, are not interested in any of the personal uh, sensitive data. They're much more interested in macro anonymized data so that they can make more informed decisions and just put relevant stuff in front of you. And that's what makes the Internet work. And that's the sort of Internet that we're trying to create for us and for our kids. Right. There's an old saying that advertising technically reaches half the people you want, but we don't know which half. That goes away. With Solomar, correct? It does. That's exactly what Solomar is after, is trying to help right-size the insight and data for marketers so that they can leverage their data to make more informed decisions, but also for us to point in an obvious way at what's working and what isn't working. Let's let the machines make the decisions that, uh, uh, that they can make, which is effectively to run math, but let's especially empower the people that are doing the buying so that they can... Uh, provide relevant ads for people, and they can be more effective so that that flywheel spins faster and the quid pro quo is preserved on the Internet. All right, let's talk about a gigantic company that has come to you, and you have a great relationship. Number one retailer in the world, not Amazon, Walmart. What are you doing for them? 
So uh, I think Walmart has had this institutional epiphany, which is that it, instead of leveraging its data simply to create a media business like many of the big tech companies have done, and they could easily do that, right. they instead decided to partner with us and then we together would, would do what they call close the loop, which make it so that when you're showing ads at the very beginning of a process about any particular product, whether it's about soap or about soda or uh, chocolate, anything, it, to, to make it so that you can show the efficacy of that advertising spend at the end of the funnel when people buy it. Right. So if you can close the loop between what's bought at a Walmart and what ads are shown, then what helps Walmart is that every product owner in the world is optimizing their media spend to sell more product at Walmart. They've been the first to trailblaze this new way of doing things and, and, and really sustain the open internet, but they will not be the last. Okay, now, uh, I am very proud of the fact that I interviewed you very early and felt that you were David versus Goliath. I continue to believe that. Most people are sensitive. No, they're afraid to go against Google, but you're doing it. Now, you still have Wall Street pieces like this. The cookie lives for another day for in favor of Google. Then here, Davidson saying not the blowout some expected. I mean, should we be worried that Trade Desk is biting up more than it can chew? No, I don't think so. And the reason why is uh, we are not trying to compete with Google at their own game. Okay. So they're, they're this big uh, entity and we're small and agile, the way that you compete with Google is not to go head to head. It is instead for us to join forces with hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of other companies who just want a competitive market. So instead of trying to control the market, we're trying to create a competitive one. And we want to empower lots of other people. We are not trying to disrupt advertising. We are trying to enable all of these companies who've been in the space for a long time so that the landscape is competitive and sustainable. Well, last question. Uh, I have begged companies with a high dollar price to split so that individuals whom we all want, your kids want, everybody exactly. wants, to be able to get them. And you did do a 10 for 1 split, which I think is what people should do. Why did you do that? So it was honestly to make it more affordable for the average uh, right. stock buyer. And so I, like you, believe deeply in empowering a, a, a more democratic market, whether that's the equities market or the advertising market, and we just want more participants. That's well, exactly what we did. I gotta hand it to you because you're doing a lot of things that I think are bold and Thank difficult, you. and yet you do it with a smile and you <laughs> do it with joy. Jeff Green, founder and CEO of The Trade Desk. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much, Jeff. my friend. Appreciate it.